Okay, my Ishin F18 is repaired and back together. If you don't know what happened there, I posted on our Facebook page, but on the second flight, first flight session, second flight, I lost radio contact with it. And it came down in just a, it was a pretty flat, slow descent. But, you know, and once I realized that I wasn't getting any elevator response from it, I did cut throttle completely and let it glide down. There was nothing I could do. But, because uh, I wasn't getting any response from the elevators. And so once it got down to the level of that scrub on the desert floor, uh, the wingtip caught a piece of scrub and it just tumbled the F-18 across the ground. Um, completely, it completely separated the nose right in front of where the wing plate is. It, it, it busted the foam all the way through. The only thing that was holding the nose of the aircraft on was the carbon reinforcement that I had run along the bottom of the fuselage that covered the underside of the nose. Otherwise, the nose would have been completely separated from the F-18. So, and it ejected the canopy and broke the canopy in half. So I got everything glued back together. I I replaced the receiver, which was a Lemon RX six-channel receiver. There's no there's no gyro in it, just a standard receiver. So I replaced that with another brand spanking new Lemon RX six channel receiver both the receivers have diversity antennas on them both the antennas were placed above you know outside of the canopy 90 degrees offset from each other well away from all the electronics so i don't know why i had that radio issue there maybe i just got a bad one or there might be a protocol issue going on and i'll i'll put together another video later on to discuss that but but anyway, the F-18 is back together. The range test checked fine, just like the previous range check. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, that doesn't mean that it's not going to have radio issues. The failsafe has been set up and it has been tested. And just for uh, good measure, I did program, reprogram the high end, low end of the ESC as well, since it was a different receiver. So it's ready to launch again. So this is going to be a composite of the three of three flights that I recorded on the Ishin F-18 50 millimeter EDF jet. Now this was a kit that I bought and put it together with my own components. So it seems to have really good power. It was set up for 4S to begin with. So it has good power for a 50 millimeter EDF jet. Um, I'm still in the tuning process. You'll hear me talk about some of the things I'm changing on it during the flights. And then at the end of the flight video, I'll be back to, let, to give you information on what I think is going on with this aircraft and why I'm seeing some strange behavior from it. So I'll see you out the field. All right, launching. Yeah. It always seems a little twitchy on the launch. Maybe I've got that. Maybe I've got the uh, CG a little bit too far back. Maybe a little too much elevator dialed into it. Watch the truck. It's got decent climb. Try 
try to be a little softer on the elevator this time. There we go. Timer's elapsed. All right. Let's bring it back around, see if we can get it on the ground. Maybe I can get a little better landing this time. So I put a little more expo into the elevator. Oh, it really nosed up when I put some elevator in it on the last landing. Oh, going around. Going around. I did it again. See if we can slow it down a little bit this time. That was better. Launching. Okay, before my walker comes back through, let's get over here and see if we can get it on the ground. I'm landing with about 3.7 volts in the pack. That was a fast landing. Launching. Oh, that was close. Almost hit my truck. That's not bad. does have some strange behaviors though. Like right there. Man, it really, it really dropped its nose there. I don't think it behaves as well as my F-16 does. I know there are a lot of people that like the F-18 better than the F-16. I don't know, maybe something's just not right on this airframe, you know, maybe their a wing is off or something, you know. It doesn't handle badly, it's just that, like right there. It really kind of dropped its nose. Okay, let's see if we can bring it in. And maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe it just like speed more than, you know, the F-16 is pretty stable. The F-16 is pretty stable. Oh, hit a rock. Oh, knock my canopy off. 
The F-16 is pretty stable at lower speeds. Okay, so like I said, still got I still have some tuning to do on the Ishin F-18, but much, much better than where I started with it. Um, here's what I think is going on. Um, where I had the original CD, CG, where I had the original CG located, and I, I looked at, you know, the the first flight, the second flight, which was the first one that I recorded, and I watched it through the turns at 60 to 70 percent throttle, and I did not see the nose drop, not once. It wasn't until I moved the CG forward a little bit because the aircraft was zooming on me. So I thought, okay, well, it needs a little more nose weight because the control surface on the elevator looks completely level. But it could be that the thrust angle on those nozzles you know, cause it to nose up a little bit when you apply throttle. I don't know any of you that have the F-18, let me know if you've seen the same type of, uh, of behavior out of it. So, so what I need to do on the next flight session, because I'm happy with the amount of authority I have on the elevator. It's nice and smooth. I have some in reserve. I'm happy with the control authority that I have on the ailerons, the, uh, the rolls at full stick deflection are nice and tight and axial and, um, and quick. But I get that zooming effect and you can see it on launch and it's, it's pretty, and that's another thing that led me to believe that it was a little tail heavy, which is why I moved the, why I moved the battery forward, moved the CG forward because it acted on launch like it was, it was tail heavy. Well, I, now I don't think that's the case. Watching how it dropped its nose after I moved the CG forward, I don't think that it was tail heavy at all. I think that the thrust coming out of that nozzle, I think pushes the nose up a little bit. So what I'm gonna have to do is just put in some down trim on the elevator to counteract that. Because in the turns and stuff, it, it, where I had my original CG, it was nice and stable through the turns it maintained its line it didn't drop its nose it didn't raise its nose so i think that's what the issue is i think that there's some i think there's some positive angle coming out of the the thrust line out of those nozzles that come out of the back of the f-18 which pitches the nose up and makes it zoom when you apply throttle and the only way i can counteract that is is with the elevator i may end up having we'll see how it works when i trim the elevator down but if, it, if I see any zooming at full throttle, I may actually have to mix in a little bit of down elevator at, with the throttle, you know, to counteract that. But I would I'd really like to know if any of you guys who have this aircraft have experienced the same thing. But uh, at least I got four flights in one flight session out of it, and I brought it home unscathed. So I'm really happy about that. I only have five flights on it now. Uh, because when it when I had the crash with it, when I I wasn't getting any response from the aircraft, it was that was just the beginning of my second flight. I mean, I had just launched it, had just turned back toward myself when all of a sudden I had no response from the elevator. So it does look like it was a communications issue with that receiver. But anyway, stay tuned. I will hopefully have this. Uh, after the next flight session, hopefully I'll have it all tuned and handling the way I want it. So um, hopefully this F-18 will turn out to be as good a flyer as the F-16 because the F-16 is awesome. I really like that airframe. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.